by Odin's beard. It is Aussieverse, and we are back. Thank you very much for spending your hard-earned time with us tonight. We really appreciate it. This is Aussieverse, and I am Omni Bo, joined by my partner in crime here, Sharif. And tonight, we have, for the first time here on Aussieverse, Peter Wilson. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you for having me. Oh, mate, it is an absolute pleasure and certainly overdue. So yes. Peter and I have never actually gotten to know each other and chatted. This is going to be the first time that we get to do that. I think it might be the same with Sharif. If I'm wrong, please correct me. That's right, yeah. But uh, Peter has been a good supporter of Aussieverse for a very long time now because I always get those notifications saying that he's liked stuff, uh, whether it be videos or comments or stuff. So I want to thank you for that, Peter. Thank you very much. Um, for those that don't know you, who are you, mate? Why are you on the show? <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of just insinuated myself in. You had someone else. He went missing. Now it's me. <laughs> Um, you probably know me from my comics work. Anyone who's watching, I do Foes. Um, that was in Presents. Um, I've done a bunch of other little comics you might have seen around in Vamoose. Um, I was in Satellites. I had my own little series before Foes, uh, Crimson and Rascal, which was a superhero parody. Um, the Scribbles, I do a lot of graphic design work for a lot of good folks in comics. You might know me from that. Yep. So, so Scribbler, Scrawler, Designer. I try to do a bit of everything. Are any of these comics that you mentioned available still to be able to get? Because I'd like to get them. Yeah, absolutely. At the comic store. Fantastic. Um, Crimson Rascal 2 is still available. It says to, it is essentially still the first story. The issue one was really more like an issue zero rough draft. You don't need to read issue one to get issue two of Crimson and Rascal. It's just a very quick, very loose superhero parody story. Yeah, sweet. You do look like a, a bit of a funny man, especially with this foes that's coming out. i got to admit, um, you have a little bit of an um, obligation at times to check out the Aussie Kickstarters, even if you're not sure. that too interested in them. And I've got to admit, I clicked on foes, and as soon as I read the premise and saw the artwork, I went, nah, <laughs> I have to get this one, man. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Tell people what foes is exactly. Uh, so Foes is, the first issue at least, establishes the rivalry between an alien and a demon who have both come to Earth to conquer and to take over and to enslave humanity. But then they both end up in the same coffee shop, reach for the same donut, and end up only ever fighting each other. <laughs> so they've got the, all the classic alien-demon tropes, you know, you know, possession, abduction, dissection hauntings but they just fixate on each other it's really it was really my way of combining horror and sci-fi through my own weird lens and how would that interact awesome well let's take a look at foes right now shall we please in a world trapped between two supernatural monsters only one sweetened ring of dough can save humanity Dementus, psychotic demon from the fires of hell. Zero, sadistic alien from the cold void of deep space. Both summoned to bring about a new world order of terror and mayhem, only to get completely hung up on a donut instead. Thus igniting a rivalry that's as destructive and as devastating as it is stupid. From Peter Wilson and Comic Studios, this debut comic is 40 pages of absurd cartoon violence the whole family will enjoy. Foes, Issue 1, The Donut Battle. Hey guys, Peter Wilson here, creator, writer, and artist of Foes, here with the inaugural Kickstarter campaign. Um, my first solo campaign, so a bit nervous, but very excited. If you've come this far, thanks so much. It's greatly appreciated. Please give what you can if you'd like to see the story come to life. Uh, I'm going to be updating pretty regularly, as much as I can here. But if you do have any questions, please message away, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, Foes coming to you from me and Comex Studios. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. 
And if we take a look at the actual Kickstarter now, we can see that it is already well past its goal. Congratulations. Thank you. That is um, hit funding in 24 hours. I was very pleased with that. Oh, wow. Okay, cool, man. Excellent. I was not expecting that at all. Issue one, the donut battle. So are you planning more foes? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. I've already started work on issue two, actually. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, script's written. It's laid out. Uh, I'm just drawing it at the moment. It's going to be two stories, um, both self-contained. There's no real continuity. Um, the first story is going to sort of lean more into the horror aspect of a demon and an alien on Earth, and it's a bit darker. Uh, it's going to be black and white, but uh, I'm really psyched about it. It's going to I be love a lot of fun. Picture. I can actually drop a Aussie verse exclusive because I got the proofs in the other day. Oh, hey! So I can uh, show off them for you guys and yeah. Okay. Cool. Before you do, we'll just keep going with this because yeah, I cool. love. I love the fact that you've got Lord Dementus and then you've got his stats. <laughs> you've got powers and abilities, conjuring hellfire, bodily possession and transformation, intelligence, 332 IQ points, personal hero. Oh, is, it, is that negative 332? Oh, negative. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> personal hero, mosquitoes. That really had me laughing when I first read that. <laughs> And hobbies, plague, war, and creative writing. <laughs> Commander Zero. Commander number blah, 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 or zero is a cold, unfeeling alien cyborg from the equally, equally cold, unfeeling expanse of deep space. His species have spread their empire far throughout the universe, enslaving, destroying, and experimenting on countless beings in the name of conquest and, to be honest, the laughs. Stats. <laughs> Powers, heightened intelligence, enhanced body modification, and a mastery of technology. Rank, planetary scout and science commander, mothership second class, celebrity crush, select <laughs> select specimens from the cephaloid species. Favorite, favorite, favorite song, five lots of two second intervals of F sharp at 40 decibels. <laughs> and, the, and the donut is just a donut there is literally <laughs> nothing special about it at all stale pink sprinkled there's really nothing to expand upon <laughs> you got some good artwork here who's doing the art that's me that's all me oh that's you as well okay cool. i write and draw the entire book yeah well so done. so with issue one it's it's all in color but you you mentioned earlier that uh issue two with the two stories will be in black and white uh, one story will be black and white. The second one will be in yeah. color. And that's just to keep it fresh for me. I like doing black mm. and white stuff. Keep it looking a little bit different each time. Well, with the, with the black and white, with, you know, you, you get to play with the with the inks and the shadows and, and the whatnot. Oh, totally. I prefer black and white. That's just a personal thing. If it was up to mm. me, all my stories would be just be black and white. Coloring really doesn't come naturally to me. It takes a long time for me to feel that I've got it right. So there you go. Completely written and illustrated by Peter Wilson, over 45 pages long, full colour for this issue, a completely self-contained one-and-done story, which is always a big thing for me if I don't want to commit that much, includes a gallery of sketches and other foes-related pieces and printed here and the USA. Other goodies also available in this campaign are select cards from the new foes trading card set which Peter did show off the other day on, what was the show you were on? I believe that was the Comex Drink and Draw. Yeah, okay, because I did the, see some of those cards. Or the Chinwag, I can't remember. Some of the very best artists in Australian comics, which is actually really true, contributed their time and talent just for this Kickstarter. Be sure to include them in your add-ons, over 30 to collect. There are two foes badges. Are you Team Dementis or Team Zero? Show off your preference in cartoon monsters in style. Original bespoke <laughs> sketches, remarks of either both characters. That's right, an original piece straight from brain to hand, from his hand to your hand. Two <laughs> foes mini ash cans. Why not treat yourself to two extra bonus foes stories? And last but not least, 
an official comics comic PDF bundle. A huge amount of incredible art and stories straight to your preferred reading device. And that's great, man. That looks really, Thank you. really interesting. All right. Show us these exclusives. So these arrived just the other day, fresh from um, Comics on Demand, Doug. It turned out pretty well. There's a couple little things I've got to tweak and edit, which I've already done. I'll give you a little bit of a... You can see some of my notes there. It does look pretty thick. That's Yeah, yeah 40 uh, pages. The paper's a bit thicker than I anticipated. But... And then the foil covers, the virgin foil covers. Oh, yes. They that turned one. out way better than... I was reluctant to do this. Um, Shane talked me into it, and my girlfriend Jess talked me into it because she loves foil covers. But I'm glad <laughs> I did. It looks really cool. And that's the same on the inside. Oh, so that's snap. the variant available. You, all you can see is my computer reflected. There we go. No, you can see it really yeah. well. That's, okay, cool. That's making me want to change my pledge, to be honest. <laughs> well, there's still plenty of time. We've got about just over a week, I believe. Yeah, that's, that's hard to say no to. Let's get it as, as an add-on. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true, too, yeah. Mm. For, the, for those that do want to check out Peter Wilson, go to his Instagram right here. Yep, and that's got a link to everything else. Yep, and the link for his Kickstarter will also be in the description as well for those that can't type in Kickstarter foes. <laughs> uh, speaking of Instagram, if you do want to check us out, go to underscore Aussieverse where you can check out Aussieverse. We do also have TikTok at Aussieverse. We have Facebook, which is Aussieverse for life because that's what we are. And when, uh, lastly, on Instagram, we also have our graphic designer, a thumbnail creator, and everything that uh, makes us look pretty, A51 underscore designs. And as usual, we are sponsored by Comics. And speaking of Comics, let's hear who they are in case you're not sure who they are. <laughs> this show is sponsored by the Comics Shop. Check out comics.cx for all things comics and find out what comics is all about. We hope you enjoyed the show. So, Peter, yeah. is is Foes your next endeavour after this or are you going to take a break and do some other stuff before the second issue? I've got a couple of little jobs I've got to work on. Um, I'm doing a page for Ryan Bell's Battery Hen, like a lot of others. Yep. Um, that's just one page, though, so not a huge project, but still a lot of fun. Um, and my friend Robbie Don, the artist, we're hoping to put out a book of short, funny comics to go along with Foes 2. We might be launching that at the same time. We might just be getting them print to order. Maybe it doesn't need a whole campaign. We haven't really finessed that. But we have decided around this time next year, we want Foes 2 and that to be ready. Yeah, awesome, man. Awesome. I'd love to see you and uh, Rob Spedzi collaborate, I reckon, because you two would have some fun, I think, together. We've talked about a to uh, Devil's Toilet Dementus crossover, something there. Yes, yes. It has come up in conversation, and that would be a lot of fun to do. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, now, uh, talking about uh, you now, Peter, um, yeah. How long have you been into comics? Has it been like your whole life, like most of us, or were you a late bloomer into the comic industry? What's, what's your story? I was late into creating them. Uh, in terms of reading and collecting, I've been doing that as long as I can remember. Um, as a kid, I'd read, um, I'd cycle between Garfield, Snoopy, and Calvin and Hobbes and The Phantom constantly. I used to go to garage sales with my mum, and she'd buy them just to shut me up. Mad Magazine, whatever she could get. If it looked like a comic, she knew I'd obsess until I got it. And I think she thought I'd grow out of that. And <laughs> it just got worse and worse. Like all of them. <laughs> and then there was kind of that lull mid-teens where, you know, you think you're too cool. <laughs> and then I still remember the comic I bought that got me back into it was a one of the Catwoman comics from the 90s, the Jim Balant run. And it was, I remember it was issue 26, I think. Two-Face was on the cover. That's why I got it. Um, so bought it, read it, skipped school, went back and bought more. And it's just evolved. Now I've got the, now I've got 
hundreds of Batman, mostly DC. And uh, then I, yeah, big DC guy. <laughs> um, then a couple of things. I injured, I talked about this on Chinwag. I got a spinal injury from a motorbike crash. And I really couldn't do much of anything except sort of just lie still and wait to heal. But what I could do was draw for brief hours at a time because I had nothing else to do. I draw something, look at it and go, well, I can do better. I'll just draw it again until it gets better. And that kind of led to me going to tape to do graphic design where I learned a lot of the technical stuff. And I couldn't find much in the way of design work. So all these things sort of came together. and I realized I could do my own comic. I know the technical side of it and, at the end of it, I'll have a product that I can show off and improve upon. And so, and that's what the first Crimson and Vile School was. Oh, right. But that came, that was quite late. That was only probably, what, seven, eight years ago now. And then I did issue two just because I thought I could do better than issue one. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, lots of little stuff. Until I got into contact with Shane, he reached out and was like, I'm doing this calendar. I'm doing this thing called Presents. What do you say? By then, I, the rough kernel of foes had existed for a while, and that was kind of the incentive to get it done. Mm. So foes has been brewing for quite a while. The first eight pages have existed in one form or another for years. It was just constantly getting revised, redrawn, until it was kind of, okay, there's a deadline now. It has to be finished. Yeah. And I'm glad I had that kick to get it done because... I think it's probably the best work I've done so far. Yeah. Well, I think Australia will agree with you, mate. Thank you very much for contributing. Oh, getting pleasure. it out there. <laughs> very happy. Do you remember what, what, what the gem of an idea that sparked um, how foes uh, would be like? Yeah. Um, doing Crimson and Rascal, I realised... The superhero thing, it's hard to do a good superhero story that really stands out, especially these days. Um, there's, you know, there's almost a complete oversaturation of them. I love them to death. A good superhero story is amazing, but there's just so much of it. And even a superhero parody story, there's so many of them. You've got the boys, the tick, you've got all sorts. Yeah. So I really thought, well... What if the story just had no hero? What if it was just two villains? And I kind of like that feeling of like, it'd be funny if two villains were fighting, even if they were fighting over the enslavement of humanity and the destruction of Earth, people would still inevitably pick a side. They'd pick a favorite. And that kind of just amused me. Like, it'd be funny if people said, I like the demon, he's cute. But the demon would still hate you. He'd still... <laughs> And then, then it was like, well, I don't want to do, say, two aliens fighting. If I'm going to do two monsters, they have to be wildly different. And then it took, and then it was, it all came to me one night in a big rush. It was really exciting at the time. It was, okay, so one's an alien. Well, that makes sense. The alien's smart. He's clean. He's cold and calculating. Demons are very emotion-based. They're passionate because they prey on people's emotions. So he can be dumb. One comes from above, one comes from below. There's just the pure opposites. And that's comedy 101. You put two opposites together and watch them go nuts. Yeah. I figured it could just be like fun and just spy versus spy. Kind of, it didn't matter if one's got his head blown off. He's a demon. He'll survive it. He'll come back. There's no continuity. <laughs> and then I realized, like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have fun with the setting as well. I, I had never done it before, but it kind of just realized the background has to be a character as well. So give it as much personality as I could, which led to all the cityscapes that you see in the book, lots of detail in them. Mm -hmm. And it came, yeah, so the donut battle was specifically because I thought, well, it's a very loose story. It's really just a chance to get to know the characters more than the story, which is just a series of crazy, horrific events. But you do get a sense of the characters by the end of it and the lengths they'll go to, how petty they are, how stupid they are, how they bring out the worst in each other. And I think that was from, I remember it was five in the afternoon because I came up with that kernel when I finished. It was about three in the morning and I had done a, the first drawing. I had done story ideas. I was contacting friends because I was so excited and they were telling me to get sleep. <laughs> I can actually show you that first picture. Which I've done. So that was the first thing I sat down and did. 
and, and it's, it's very there. close to the the finished product yeah not much change they're a bit lankier now and not quite as top heavy but really they haven't changed much I really wanted all the really classic demon alien looks in there, you know, bulbous gray head, long fingers, horns, hooves, tail. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. What, what intrigues me um, about people that actually go ahead and write a comic, especially one as, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is yours, but, um, but um, not complicated. Like, okay. So let me explain. What I mean is, is that I have, a million ideas for comics myself however having an idea is very different than fleshing out a story and yeah. actually making a good a, a comic right um yeah. I, I could turn around to you and say oh okay i'm, I'm gonna make a comic where a, a demon and an alien come to earth and fight over a donut and people go ha 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 yeah that's really funny but to put that into an actual story for, <laughs> for 40 odd pages and make it um, exciting and funny and uh, to a success. Um, that that really fascinates me. Um, I don't know what you can tell us more about the comic without spoiling anything. So there might you might not be able to reply to this at all. But I guess I just want to say um, I can't wait to get it because I can't wait to see what you do with that idea and <laughs> and spread that out into a story because that's fascinating. It, it is a deceptively simple premise. Like it's probably not originally, you know, cartoon characters have fought for since Tom and Jerry. Yeah. But um, you know, there is a tendency, especially with comic writers, to overcomplicate ideas. Everything has to be a universe connected, has to be a series. Um, there's a lot of joy in just a very simple, dumb premise of two monsters fighting over a cake, beverage, snack. <laughs> And it does give you a surprising amount of freedom. You can go wherever you want with that story. Yeah. Is there many um, supporting characters? Not in this one. I hope to introduce a couple here and there as the series goes on. Um, issue two will have a couple. I don't know if they'll come back necessarily, but they are playing off a cast of other characters more in issue two. Yeah. I suppose I can say... In issue two, they get kidnapped by a cosmetics company <laughs> because they're no lo the cosmetics company is no longer allowed to test on animals. But technically, a demon and alien don't exist, so they can do whatever they want to them. <laughs> and when they arrive in the compound, there's also Bigfoot, some ghosts, uh, a, La a Loch Ness type monster, Chupacabra, <laughs> and it's them. It's their escape. It's them busting out. Oh, nice. That's and cool. It's kind of for the first time, they're sort of forced to almost cooperate, but it's at the expense of all these other animals and creatures. And, <laughs> and so it'd be cool to bring some of them back because they they do make a lot of enemies. So <laughs> fair enough. How much of a how much of a collateral damage that these two cause? Seeing seeing how uh, a technically advanced <laughs> alien with someone from the underworld with, with all this magic i mean in issue it's... one alone they derail a train they destroy the sewer system <laughs> they, <Of course. laughs> they kill about 11 people um <laughs> and those people were their followers and their friends just because they spoke out of turn to them um <laughs> It's not a gruesome death. It's a very quick death, if that helps. <laughs> um, so a fair bit of collateral damage, yeah, just by them existing here. I feel this, they're going to wreck stuff. So, Even on their good days, probably. So you're a big DC guy. If you, yeah. could, if you could put your two characters into any DC book where mm. they either fight a DC hero or they team up with a DC villain... What book, what DC book would you chuck them in? That's a good question. I feel like Plastic Man, they'd have a lot of laughs with Plastic Man because <laughs> the rest of the Justice League wouldn't necessarily believe him <laughs> if he said he had that problem. <laughs> um, same with Booster Gold. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I feel like Superman. Superman could probably solve the problem a bit too quickly. Oh, you know, no, Superman, Superman's had quite the problem with Mixie Pitlick. That's magic is a problem. That's true. That, and I think Dementors would be pretty smug about that. Yeah. Um, I mean, my instincts say Batman, but <laughs> in a weird way, there's like a mental block. I, I, you know, you sort of daydream about the ultimate fan script, how fun it would be to work with your favorite superheroes, Batman, the big ones, you know. But it's just this weird mental block of like, that, that's too much. It's like looking at the sun. I couldn't do a full Batman <laughs> script. <laughs> But I love, I, there's a great roster of sort of D-leaguers in the DC comics. So one of those guys I think would be cool. Blue Beetle. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. Um, the tactician. I think the chaos would be a lot of fun watching him try and... So being an artist yourself, who's your favourite artist? Oh, man. It varies. Bill Watterson of Calvin and Hobbes fame. He's always way up there. I think he's one of the greatest cartoonists of all time. Um, Kevin Eastman, not necessarily his style, but I just, I think the first Ninja Turtles comic is the ultimate indie comic success story. Yeah, that's true. Um, ben Endland, his original run on The Tick. It was um, mm. for a guy who claims he had no cartooning experience, it's a fantastic book. It's just so dynamic and it's just fun to look at. Um, I've got a pile of books behind me. It's hard to think of names off the top of your head when you're under pressure, I know. I've been reading an Ed McGuinness run, his stuff on Superman back in the early 2000s. I really appreciate his style. I so think he, you... Sorry. I think he... Um, there's a really great line between cartooning and realism with his stuff that I really love. That's the kind of stuff I gravitate towards. Yeah, yeah, right. Do you have any, like, favourite cover artists? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of his name now. You might be able to help me out, Sharif. He did a bunch of really realistic-looking detective covers. Oh, Matina? No. Hang on. It's his stuff is like almost photo real. He recently released a um a book of his Batman detective covers, and they were absolutely fantastic. I'm trying to think who it is because yeah, that's the sort of art that I love. Like my favorite artist is Del Otto. Okay. Wait, he did, he called it Dear Detective. Dear Detective. Here it is. Yeah, that's him. That's the guy you're talking about. <laughs> oh, Matina. No, Lee, Lee Bahimo? Oh, okay, yeah. Lee, he's stuck. It looks like you could wear that bat costume. Like you feel the sweat in it. You see the rivets in his costume. You see the bruises on his face. As someone who can't do realism that well, I'm always blown away by yeah. that imagination. Mm. Yeah, I'm so gonna just, whenever I see it, I'll buy it just on principle because I think it looks amazing. Um, do you do you draw inspiration from uh, from anyone um, when you're putting your pen to paper? There's, I find, honestly, I'll, I'll put on shows like this and Chinwag and whatnot because it's exciting to see what my friends are up to and how they're, what their process is and what they've got coming out. That sort of gets my engine going in a way that listening to the big wigs and the professionals, they're inspiring and everything. It's great, but there's kind of a disconnect there. Mm. So lately it's been a lot of that, um, you know, listening to old drink and draws and it's just tricky when you're on the drink and draws. I hate hearing my own voice. So that's always, a bit tricky. Um, the cartoonist Kayfabe. Old episodes of them are always good. I think that's because they're artists interviewing other artists, so they kind of know the lingo a bit. For those that don't know uh, the Drink and Draw show that Peter's talking about, that's every second Friday on the Comics Network. Go check it out because it is a great show. They've had over 100 episodes, so there's a lot to catch up on, but don't, be, uh, don't, don't let that be 
a negative thing. That just means you have a lot of good comedy to watch, especially with the host Spencey. Uh, rotating roster of artists there, but there is the ones that come on nearly every week too. And I know that I spend every second Friday watching it myself. It's a really great show. Go check it out. It is. It's a lot of fun. Sharif, any other questions for our man? Uh, no. no. I'm, I'm just waiting for, for this to end before I, I head on to the Kickstarter. <laughs> I want the full cover. <laughs> done and done. Look at him. <laughs> um, so, Peter, who is your favourite superhero of all time? Is it Batman? Batman or Superman? Batman or Superman, yeah, fair enough. I can never pick just one. So, if they fight each other, who wins, in your mind? Because that's a big discussion. It's all, In my mind, it's always Batman. Oh, really? If only because I think Superman would pull his punches every time. And if <laughs> it comes to the crunch, Batman will get nasty. He'll play dirty. Fair enough. So who's your favourite Batman in the movies? Christian Bale. Yeah, fair enough. Or Michael Keaton. It's Michael <laughs> Keaton's got the nostalgia childhood factor. Yeah. But Dark Knight is perhaps the greatest superhero movie ever made, so it's hard to top that. Yeah, I think I'd have the exact same answer, to be honest with you. Uh, nostalgia. Yeah. Nostalgia versus cool. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Peter, for joining us. We really, really sincerely appreciate it. Sorry it's taken so long, but please don't hesitate to ever come on the show again, not just for work that you want to talk about, but even if you just want to come on and, I don't know, shoot the shit with us on other episodes, any other live chats that we do, or you just want to show off any of your collection or anything at all, mate, hit me up. Awesome. Okay. Love to. Thank you. Um. I guess my, our last question to you for the show would be, uh, if we said to you, what is Aussieverse, what would your answer be? I'd say it's exactly what Australian comics needs right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. What I was looking for, though, as much as I appreciate that, was, oh. Sharif, what is Aussieverse? Of course, it's for life. That's right, baby. Aussie versus for life. And we'll catch you next time. Thank you for joining us.